Hello and welcome back to the New Mexico Science Fiesta. So excited that you've uh, decided to join our breakout room here uh, with uh, Jonathan Wolf. Um, he's with the Fractal Foundation and he's going to tell us what fractals are. And um, I think you're just going to be amazed at uh, just the, not just the science and the math behind it, but just the artistic elements uh, the, the, and the creativity that fractals bring in. So super pleased to have you here, Jonathan. Uh, show us what you got. Awesome. Thank you so much, Allison. And thank you to all the hardworking people here at Explora helping make the New Mexico Science Fiesta so successful. Um, as Allison said, I'm Jonathan Wolf. Most people don't call me the Fractal Man because what I do is teach people all about fractals. I travel all over and uh, inspire people as much as I can with the beauty of math and science. At the Fractal Foundation, we have a little slogan I like to share. It is, Fractals are smart. It stands for science, math, and art. So uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about all of that. But first of all, let me answer the question, what is a fractal anyway? Why do we care? OK, a fractal is a never-ending pattern. It's a shape that recurs over and over again at different scales. Sometimes you can think of it as a shape made of little copies of itself. And the reason we care about fractals is because nature is full of them. All the shapes and patterns you see in the natural world, almost all of them are fractals. Things like trees and rivers and mountains, and lightning bolts and clouds. And in fact, we are made of fractals inside our bodies. Our lungs are fractals, our brain cells are fractals, our bones are full of fractal porous structures, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, what's not a fractal? straight lines, smooth surfaces like spheres, cones, cubes, kind of traditional geometry that we teach in school. Because of what we're up to with the Fractal Foundation, we are transforming that to start teaching about fractals and the, the patterns of nature. All right, so we're not going to be doing um, natural fractals here. We've got a bunch of fractivities exploring those. But what I'm going to show you are how, do you, how to make fractals with geometry, things like this fractal tetrahedron, very cool shape. Um, and it's an engineering activity as much as a math or science or art activity. We've got fractal cubes. I'm going to show that. I said cubes aren't fractals. Well, if you decorate them like th these, they are. So um, I have a bunch of different fractivities to show you. Now, some of you might be familiar with the algebraic fractals, like the Mandelbrot set. This image here is called the Julia set. These are made with computers and algebra. And we created a science destination you can find on the um, Science Fiesta page uh, to show how to use software and computers to make fractals like that, or like the flying fractal hot air balloons that we uh, fill the skies of Albuquerque with. So um, that's not what I'm going to show you here. I'm going to do very much a hands-on fractivity and show you how to make your very own fractal using nothing more than paper and scissors, markers, and some tape. Okay, so the first fractivity I'm going to show you is how to make a fractal triangle. So this pattern, this idea, I did not invent this. I turned it into a fractivity, but this is actually quite an old pattern. This is called the Sierpinski triangle, named after a Polish mathematician named Václav Sierpinski, but actually this shape is really old, and there are mosaics in Italy that are almost a thousand years old that show this very pattern um, made in stone tablets. It's a wonderful idea, very simple to make, and very complex and beautiful. So, one of the things that I love about fractals is that they're really complicated and really simple. And one of the universal principles of fractals that I'm going to show you here is that fractals, they look complicated, but all fractals are made by repeating a simple process over and over and over again. So uh, in, that, in nature, that happens all the time, like a tree will grow by um, shooting up a little sprout out of the ground, and then it splits into branches, and each of those branches branches again, and each of those branch again, and it's that repetition that creates the complexity in the geometry. Now, this is not a naturally occurring fractal I'm going to show you. This is a fractal triangle, but again, it illustrates this process of doing something simple over and over again. So all you have to do is 
start with a triangle. You can download these templates at our website, fractalfoundation.org. We've got a nice page full of fractivities, lots of different um, lessons that you can explore and make different kinds of fractals with. But I, I'll give you a hint, you don't even need this special template. You can just take a blank piece of paper and draw a triangle. Um, this is a nice dimensioned one, and it's an equilateral triangle, but you can do this for activity with any kind of triangle. It doesn't have to be equilateral. In this case, um, I've chosen one that's nine inches on a side and equilateral. And I've pre-labeled or pre-indicated these midpoints with dots here. So that, that's kind of the starting point. So what you do is repeat a simple process. You take your triangle and you make little dots at the midpoint. The midpoint is halfway along each edge. And then you connect them. Take a marker, draw a line, draw a line, and another line. And then you color it in. Okay, I'm going to take a little shortcut and not color it in terribly neatly. You can spend as much time and make this as precise and beautiful as you want, or as quick and dirty as you feel. Okay? So, that's our first step, first iter iteration. It's a cycle of activity. Now, what we're left with is very interesting. You always color in the downward pointing triangle. Don't color in these outer ones. You leave those ones blank. Because then, we proceed to the second iteration. I'm going to change colors now. And I'm left with three upward pointing triangles. Each are just like the original triangle, but smaller. They're half the width. All right, so what do I do? I find the midpoints, make a little dot, and a dot, and a dot, and I connect those. Color that downward pointing triangle in the middle, and this time in red. Ah, but I'm only one third of the way done. I have to do that with this triangle here. And with this triangle over here. And color the band. And fractals take a great deal of patience. That's one of the lessons of fractal making is patience and persistence, perseverance, and teamwork and cooperation. Because I could spend all day making a complex fractal triangle pattern, or I could do it with a bunch of friends in my school class, and we would finish the whole huge fractal in just a few minutes, because each student can make their own fractal triangle and continue, and so on. All right. Now, I'm going to do one more iteration, but with each step, with each iteration, we have three times as many triangles. So I'm not gonna bore you guys by just drawing fractals here all day, but I'll show you one more step. We take each of these white remaining nine triangles. These are powers of three. We start with one, we turn it into three, we take each of those three, we turn it into nine, and we take each of those Nine, we do the same, same process again. Find the midpoints, connect them, color it in, color in the downward facing triangle in the middle. And what that leaves us, what that will leave us with when I'm done with this iteration, is nine times three, or 27 little white triangles remaining. There's nine up here, and nine here, and there'll be nine down here. Once you get good at this, you can skip that point about drawing the dots and just kind of approximate where the midpoints are. I've done this a few thousand times now, so I'm pretty good at it. But when you're just starting out, I recommend not taking that shortcut and making the dots. And remember, always color in only the downward pointing one. That's the number one most common mistake when we teach this activity in schools. People start coloring in the upward facing ones, and then you can't go on. You can't continue because that's the area where you're going to be making the smaller versions. All right, so I 
think you can see that we would we could keep doing this. I like to say a fractal is a never-ending pattern. It's made by just repeating a simple process. Here we have the third iteration of the Sierpinski fractal triangle with 27 little pieces. Here's an example of one step farther, and another one, and here's a nice one. You can see the tiny detail. What comes next after 27 times 3 is 81. 81 times 3 is 243 times um, 3 is 729, and so on. Now, we could keep making smaller and smaller ones of those. Well, we're not going to do that. Look at this one. All right. Um, takes a lot of patience, but I have lots to show you. What I'm going to show you now is where we flip this fractivity around, and instead of making smaller and smaller versions of the same shape, I'm going to build them together into a bigger copy of the same shape. So we do this in schools. I'm going to do this on the floor here. So let's rearrange the viewpoint. And what we can do is we can take three fractal triangles and assemble them like so. And lo and behold, we have a fractal triangle, twice as large as the original. Aha, pretty amazing. I'm going to straighten this out because now we're going to do it again. And once you see a self-similar pattern, that is to say a shape made of little copies of itself, you can go on and on and on forever. There are no limits with fractals. It's one of the beautiful and inspiring lessons of fractals. And so this is the, uh, the gateway to infinity. We can just keep on going. And I'm going to take three groups of three. And you can see they're made at different resolutions students have made these from all over the world. We collect fractals from students who do this fractivity as far away as Australia and uh, Hawaii, Alaska, almost all of the 50 states. And uh, people love making fractals and they collaborate and we join them together into bigger and bigger copies. Here we can see this is now the third order fractal because we have the first order which is a single one, the second order, which is a group of three, third is a group of nine, so three times three. What if I made three groups of these, that is to say 27, that's kind of a typical class size in schools, so we like to do this for activity with students where they all cooperate, make their own fractals, and then we put them together. We might have to back the camera up just a little bit. And when you're doing this fractivity, you always want to be focusing on groups of three. There's a few common ways that people make uh, mistakes in this fractivity, and it's extremely tempting to want to fill in these big open areas like this. Just to say making a tiling pattern, which is totally valid from the standpoint of tessellation, which is repeating the same shape across space, but fractals repeat the same shape across different scales, so we're shrinking. And there it's really important to always respect this fractal rule where there's a big open space in the middle and not fill that in with uh, little fractal tiles. All right, so here we have the group of 27. This is like a single classroom of students and you can do this for activity in oh, three minutes where each, each student makes their own fractal triangle and then you group them together in groups of three, three groups of three is nine, three groups of nine is 27. What's fun is if multiple classrooms do this, you have three classes, join theirs together, that makes 81 fractal triangles. Take three groups of that, three groups of 81, you get 243 and so on and so forth. You can fill a whole um, gymnasium or cafeteria with the output of an entire school. In fact, we filled up the convention center um, in downtown Albuquerque with 6,561 fractal triangles like this, just spreading out and out and out. Um, that is 3 to the 8th power. That is to say 3 times 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 3. And we're excited to break our own record 
It's a world record setting fractal. Uh, we want to make one three times bigger. That will have 19,683 fractals in it. Um, we need a big space for that. We're going to have to probably go out of, out of state into a uh, covered baseball stadium so that we can lay it out. It'll fill up an entire baseball field. Uh, it has to be indoors, though, so it don't blow away because it's temporary art. All right, if we can zoom back in, I'm going to show how we can extend this fractivity out of a two-dimensional plane into three dimensions. So what do we call a three-dimensional triangle? I'm going to show you how we make one with toothpicks and marshmallows. This is a very special shape. Many people think this is a pyramid. It is, however, not a pyramid. There's a wonderful technical term for this. We call it a tetrahedron. This is distinct from a pyramid which has a square base, like the Egyptian pyramids. Um, so they're not a perfect uh, solid that has the same shape on all sides, like a cube or tetrahedron or octahedron icosahedrons or dodecahedron. Those are the five platonic solids that have the same shape on all sides. So a tetrahedron is the simplest uh, perfect polyhedron. And you can make these with toothpicks and the little mini marshmallows. This is a fun fractivity. What's really cool is to build multiple tetrahedra together into a bigger one. So whereas the uh, two-dimensional triangles we build three of them together into a bigger version of the same shape. With tetrahedra, they work in powers of four. So we take four of these little subunits and we assemble them into a bigger tetrahedron like this. All right, so um, it takes a little bit of doing. You have to kind of undo your marshmallows or build them uh, cleverly, you know, just to create a structure like this. And a little tip. It works better if you age your marshmallows a few days, let them get a little crusty and stale, otherwise they kind of they're a little droopy. What, um, this is an engineering project, right? So you want the, the strength to, to be there uh, in your materials. But what I want to say from an engineering standpoint is that triangles are incredibly strong and stable structures, right? So they don't wibble or wobble, uh, they can't flex or bend, and if you do them right, you can take one group, one, one tetrahedron, take four of them to make one of these, take four of these, scale them up into this, which is a lovely third order tetrahedron, now made out of four times four, which is 16 little tetrahedrons, tetrahedra. And of course we could do this again. This is a great fractivity to do in schools where each student makes one of these, and then you take four groups of students, you make one of these, and then you take four of these, that is 16 students together can make a bigger one. That looks like one of these. This is a different media. You can do these with paper and scissors, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. You can download the templates for these at our website and the instructions. Um, this is a slightly more complicated template. With the uh, fractal triangles, you can just start with the plain old triangle. But this one I recommend actually downloading the template for sure because it's a little bit complicated. And then what you do is you cut it out. I'm not going to demonstrate that because it's boring to watch somebody cut paper on the internet. But uh, I've pre-cut this. And I'll show you a little trick how you fold this because it is a little bit subtle. The first thing you do is you fold these little flaps down. These are the pieces that you're going to tape together to join the thing into an object. So I fold the flaps and then I fold it in thirds. Excellent. Thank you. So we fold it like this. And like so. And Fractal making teaches you patience, for sure, but also precision, because you can do this quick and dirty and sloppy, but they won't fit together so well if you do that. So you want to take your time and really do it carefully, because a little error in each subunit will actually amplify and grow, and so they won't fit together very well. 
if you're not precise at the, at the get go. Now, I am rushing here a little bit. I'm just showing you the general concept. And you just take a piece of tape and you tape it down over these little flaps, like so. And it's pretty straightforward and simple to build your own little tetrahedron like this. And this is the basic building block, the subunit of the tetrahedron fractal activity. Um, and we do it in two different media. One is the uh, toothpick and marshmallow engineering um, project. You could also do it, I should say, with, um, well, with lots of things. We've done it with uh, drinking straws, uh, which is fun and then tissue paper to coat the outsides with, and so on. Um, probably do it with spaghetti and marshmallows too, bigger. But anyway, so here I've got a subunit, basic tetrahedron. Uh, just takes a couple of minutes to make one of those to cut it and tape it. But then again, what I said about uh, teamwork and cooperation, it would take, uh, you know, if it took me just a few minutes to do this, it would take me a long time to make this by myself because there's 16 of these, right? And uh, so this is a really good fractivity to do with your friends, classmates, like that, uh, because that way you don't have to do it all by yourself and you can collaboratively make one of these big, beautiful artworks. Um, these are super fun. It turns out uh, the person who invented this, as far as I know, was the famous uh, inventor Alexander Graham Bell, who is also famous for inventing the telephone, but I like the fact that he invented the fractal tetrahedron. He built kites out of this pattern. Wow. So you can, uh, if you coat half of them uh, with paper or fabric, I think he did silk um, on his, and then make a bridle out of it, you can actually make these fly, which is pretty cool. I want to build special shaped balloons that are built out of these. There are um, a couple of special shaped tetrahedron balloons, but they're just one big tetrahedron. But I would like to make uh, clusters of fractal tetrahedrons like this and fly them. I think I uh, like the mylar shiny gas balloons would be just fabulous. Beautiful. Beautiful. So um, currently we build flying fractal hot air balloons like these. You might see them in the skies of Albuquerque. We are not flying at Balloon Fiesta because that's not happening this year. However, we will be flying um, at the non-fiesta um, all week, next week, and uh, both weekends, and like that. So definitely, if you're in Albuquerque, look up, and hopefully you'll see some flying fractals gracing the skies of Albuquerque. All right, um, so I've showed you the fractal tetrahedra. Lots of fun. What about cubes? All right, this is a whole different shape. And I did say that fractal that cubes aren't fractals, but I want to show how you can make a cube into a fractal. You can download the template for this fractivity also at fractalfoundation.org. The template looks a bit like this, kind of a strange looking shape. This is a fractal, this is based off a fractal called the Menger sponge. And um, this is a fun one. You can take this template and cut it out. Again, I've pre-cut this one. The first thing you do once you cut your pattern is fold the flaps in. I'll show you how to assemble this. So you make your own individual fractal cube. And the Menger, Menger sponge, excuse me, is a really fun fractal because it's made with just a square. And then what you do is is you chop the central square. Basically, you turn it into nine cylinders, and you cut out the middle one, fill it in solid, and then you do the same process with each of the eight remaining squares around it, and then around it again and again and again. So it has a different kind of mathematics, and I'll explain that when we build these. Unlike the fractal triangles, which you have to group in groups of three, so they work in, in powers of three. They go three, nine, 27, 81. And the fractal tetrahedra, which move in powers of four. So you have four and then 16, 64, 256, 1024, et cetera. 
the Menger, Menger sponge fractal, they group at a much slower rate. So they're actually a really important one to collaborate on because you don't want to spend your whole life building one of these. Um, it's much better to do this as a team effort. So again, what I'm doing here is um, taping the flaps together. And I'm kind of rushing because I want to show lots of things here. But when you're doing this by yourself, definitely take your time. Patience and uh, precision pay off and make for a better work product. Um, so don't be sloppy. Take your time and get all the little squares to line up just right. Uh, not a flap there. Okay, so now we have one of these, and what I'd like to show is that you can take several of these and stack them together into a bigger and bigger pattern. But actually, it takes a whole bunch of these. You need 20 Menger sponge cubes to make a bigger one. So this is a great activity for a class of students to do together. You do three by three by three, which sounds like 27, but actually there's holes in the sides and the very center, so it comes out to 20. All right, there's one more fractivity I'm going to show you, which is a paper cutout fractal pop-up greeting card like this. I've always loved pop-up cards. Uh, there's actually a couple of variations. This is one called a Pueblo fold because it kind of looks like a Pueblo, like the ones up at Talos, the multi-story ones. Uh, but this, like all fractals, is made by repeating a simple process. So I'm just very quickly going to show you how to do that. The instructions are on our website. You start with a piece of paper, you fold it like this, like a book. Take your scissors. And along the folded side, I'm going to make a cut halfway from side to side and halfway up. And you can just kind of approximate and eyeball where to go. We take that and we fold it over like so. And now this is the slightly subtle part. This is where people struggle a little bit because it's a three-dimensional uh, maneuver. I take this and I invert it. I fold it inside itself like so. That's the one tiny little tricky part to explain. All right, so if I open it up, this is what I have at this step. But I'm not done. That's my first, excuse me, first iteration. So then you do the same thing again, where I'm going to cut along the spine, the folded side, halfway up and halfway along. And the same over here. Don't cut too far down. That's a very common mistake to make. And I fold it over again. And the intermediate steps should look like a staircase. Okay, that's one way to know that you're on the right track. And I open it up. And I invert them. As with all fractals, they illustrate and require patience because at each step, you have twice as many operations to do as the previous step. Uh, powers of, of two in this case. Sometimes it's three times as many the triangles are four times as many with the tetrahedra. So I'm only going to show one more iteration on this one. Halfway, 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 and halfway. And then we cut, we fold, and then the third part of the process is the flipping, which is the subtle part. So here, and now as you can see, I have twice as many pieces to flip. But once you get to this iteration, it really starts looking and feeling like a fractal. And again, like all fractals, it's a complex, self-similar pattern made by repeating a simple process. That is the key of fractals. And what's so fun about these hands-on fractivities is there's nothing abstract about this. It's not a computer program. It's not a mathematical formula that it's a process that you repeat over and over again, and you build something really cool and fun and kind of 
kind of amazingly, if you look at this carefully, you might notice the same fractal triangle geometry. It might show up a little better here. Depends on the angle that you're looking at it, but uh, sometimes you can see that better. But I love it in math where you do totally different processes and somehow amazingly you end up with the same kind of shapes or patterns. It's one of those mathematical miracles almost. That there's these underlying patterns in math and nature that just show up over and over again. I think I'm out of time, and um, this is wonderful. Thank you for letting me I, share some productivity. Sir. I just love exactly as you were saying. It's like so simple, and yet creates such a complex pattern. Absolutely, it's the joy of fractals. Right? Yeah, it's, it's um, you know there's all this complexity in the world, and you can ask where does it come from? How does it get there? And nature has all sorts of patience. You know, it's like these these. Uh, these river networks that erode, that erode over millions of years, they create these complex watersheds. And it's like that, that kind of phenomenon happens over and over again. Once you start seeing and appreciating the power of simple repetition uh, to create complex geometry, it's right. beautiful. Right. So um, tell us a little bit about why you picked these particular activities to showcase, uh, like you said, the, the math, math, math magical. Yeah. Properties of, of fractals. Sure. Um, well, you know, there's thousands of different kinds of fractals. Why I, I chose these ones are because they're so tangible and they're really accessible, right? Um, you don't need a computer. Uh, you don't need a lot of fancy algebra that makes, you know, these are wonderful fractals, right? But you need a computer program. Not a very complicated one, but still, um, any kid has access to paper and scissors, right? So this is one of our most successful fractivities. It's very low budget. You can make lots of fractals in a short amount of time. And it really, um, it's so successful, I think, because you, you gain the understanding. You, you just right. really do it um, very tangibly. And once you draw a fractal triangle, and like I said, you don't need that fancy template. You just need a piece of paper, right. you draw a triangle, and so I end up doodling these things all the time, just like boom, 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 and then boom, boom, boom. You can do them in black and white or blue, monochrome, single color. Okay, nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really easy. But that's what I love about this, uh, because it's such a basic, simple concept. And uh, instead of watching me do this, you should do this yourself, and then you'll understand fractals. So that's why I chose this one, because yeah. it's, um, it just really teaches that process, that idea of repeating a simple process over and over again creates complexity. I will say that this is a really useful engineering structure, too, and that um, cell phone antennas have fractals inside the cell phone, wow. which is super cool. It's a very powerful geometric structure. And I love that you created an entire foundation dedicated to fractal education. Well, thank you. It's really inspiring. And um, you know, we've taught math um, for the same way for hundreds of years, thousands of years, if you go all the way back to the Greeks and classical geometry. But it was only in the last 30 years or so that fractal geometry has started to come into the mainstream. But our education systems have to catch up. Right. And we have to start teaching about mathematics that describes real phenomena in nature, the jagged, rough, irregular patterns of trees and rivers and mountains and clouds, right. those are what makes math useful and exciting. Right, and, and creative. And creative, yeah. right? Because math is actually a tool that can help us make beautiful artworks. I think the flying fractal balloons, excuse me. There it goes. There it goes, <laughs> it wants to fly away. Uh, these are my most exciting and uh, kind of inspiring art project um, in that regard. And this. Simple linear mathematics, just a very simple algebraic equation, but uses the power of computers to harness that over and over again and turn it into something just breathtakingly beautiful. Right. Super inspiring. So, what are you doing next? That's uh, a couple things that are really exciting for you right now. All right, that's a really great question. Uh, well, we're gearing up for the fall fest of ballooning, so it's not the fiesta. So, what I love more than anything as an artist and I'm a scientist, I'm a neuroscientist, but I'm also an artist, and this is my favorite medium. So what I'm really excited about is not just to get to show this balloon in public, um, 
but we're all the time creating new balloon designs. Okay, so we've actually built two flying fractals. The other one lives in Europe right now, its name is Fibonacci. Um, so we have two of these flying fractals, but I've got a hundred of them in my head, right? Maybe a thousand, because fractals are infinite, and when you start playing with these creative possibilities, you just you can't stop. So um, what I'm really excited about is designing more flying fractals and putting them into the world as giant mathematical that's artifacts. Awesome. So that's one of the things I'm really excited about. The other is educational. And what I'm particularly excited about is helping create a structure to teach, not just students, because we've taught over 70,000 kids about fractals over the last 20 years. But what I'm really excited about is moving up a, a scale and teaching teachers how to teach fractals. Um, and so we're part of a Project ECHO STEAM education group where we work together in a group of 20 or 30 teachers interactively to help develop uh, STEAM lessons in science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So it's more than just fractals, but it's, it's how to make engaging lessons available. And we're building these fractal communities, if you will, uh, because I can't change the world at scale by myself. But harnessing the power of fractals, these branching patterns that reach out and out. So we're piloting this with a group of, say, 25 teachers. But then we want to replicate that and replicate that and replicate that with organizations that host multiple fractal education programs. That way we can end up teaching thousands of teachers all over the world how to teach math and science in fun, engaging, interactive ways. And therefore, we could then ultimately reach millions of students, which is really what I'm excited about. And that's what, uh, yes, that's what science and math and, and engineering and uh, education should be all about. So we're so excited to um, have had this uh, great uh, breakout session with uh, Jonathan Wolf from Fractal Foundation. And uh, we're going to join over at the main stage uh, in just a few minutes and wrap the 2020 New Mexico Science Fiesta up. So, uh, hang tight. We'll see you in a few. Thanks so much. <laughs>